In this presentation, we're going to add expenses with the use of bank feeds. We're going to be looking at those kind of easier type of expenses, those type of expenses that will be kind of standard expenses from month to month and the ones that could help with suggestions from the prior month. We've entered data into the prior month. It can now help us with suggestions for the expenses within the current month. Let's get down to business with Sage Business Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars Company summary page within Sage. We're going to be opening up our reports by going to the reporting dropdown, starting off with that balance sheet report. So we're going to open up that balance sheet report. Then we're going to duplicate the tab by hovering over that tab and then right clicking on it so that we can then duplicate it. We're going to do the same thing for the income statement. Going back to the tab to the left, we're going to go over to the reporting dropdown once again. Take a look at that profit and loss, otherwise known at the, as the income statement or P&L. Once generated, we will then duplicate the tab by going over the tab, right clicking on it and duplicate that tab. Let's change the dates or check the dates. I've logged out and back in so the dates may have changed now. Sage is pretty good at saving the dates if you're working and even if you leave and go back into the reports. But I'm going to make it as of the end of the year, uh, even though we're entering it for March. Just to, I don't know why I'm going to end of the year <laughs> for 1231. And so then I'm going to calculate that report. And then I'm going to go to the profit and loss, and I'm going to see the uh, entire year here. So I like to just look at this year. I, I go to the drop down because I'm currently in this year right now. So I'm just going to say this year. I'd like to pick up the whole year so I can see the whole year. Calculate it. There we have it. So this is what we have at this point in time. Let's go on back to the first tab now. We're going to be going to the banking information because we've uploaded new bank feeds, which is quite exciting. We're going to have a lot of more information down here. 17 items that are currently in the sage bank feed limbo and we're going to bring them on over to the financial statements they're not included in the financial statements at this time and uh, it's our job to to bring them on over similar process to last month here now what i'm going to do is go through and look for the the ones that are going to be easier now note you have some suggestions now so here's a suggestion right here i don't think that one's quite right so the the suggestions aren't always quite right here but we they can help us out from month to month to have the suggestions the suggestions work very well if we have one customer or one vendor compared to one account and, and then it'll apply out, out to that account and that's that's what we're looking for here so if we go through here, th these work well with like standard type of uh, expenses, such as the Edison bill that we had. You'll note this one. It's going right to uh, the utilities expense. And that's exactly what we want. It's, it's a suggestion. The suggestion works because pretty much every time Edison pops up as a vendor that comes through on the bank feeds, it's going to go to that same account. So we're going to go, yeah, that one looks good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, let's make it an electronic feed. And that's it. That's all I have to do for that one. So, so for those ones, that, again, you have the same vendor and the account. This this process works quite well. What's going to happen when I add this? It's going to be decreasing the checking account, and the other side is going to go to the utilities expense. So just like last month, so I'm going to add it. I won't go check it right now. I'll just uh, add it, and we'll keep on going through these. These, and then uh, let's see. The bank service charge is a pretty straightforward one. <clears throat> The bank service charge uh, went is, is the bank is the is the vendor doesn't have the vendor that's okay it's a bank it's not really a vendor it's kind of like the bank so if it doesn't have one that's fine I'm gonna say the method's gonna be electronic again it, it picks the account for us and it's correct so that one's good so I'm gonna pick that one up so notice how easy how much easier it is on the second month. Now, those are the only two that really drew forward because we spent a lot of time on the first month looking at things other than just normal kind of expenses. But the same would be true for a lot of these other expenses like the telephone expense and other kind of expenses that would you know, be the same from month to month or at least be going to the same account each month. So let's go through a couple more of these now. I'm going to pick up the other accounts, other type of expense accounts that we may not have had last month. Uh, we have the insurance company. Now, I'll deal with this later because insurance is one of those things where we have to think about should we put it on the books as a prepayment or an expense? So we'll talk about that later. Staples is a supply store. So I'm going to say Staples. Let's put that into office supplies. That's fairly standard. And I'm just going to do this same process we had before. I'm just basically going to copy the item from the reference, which typically includes the reference typically includes part of the vendor name or includes the vendor name. So I'm going to add the vendor. And I, I do suggest adding the vendor when appropriate, right? It suggest adding the vendor, which is like most of the time. So then you can run reports by vendor, which is helpful. And then I'm going to have this to the electronic. Uh, and then I'm going to say this is going to go to some kind of supplies. Let's see if we have like an office supplies. There we go. Office supplies. Let's pick that one up. That's the one. Let's add that. 
Next, we have the Verizon down here. So if we go down to uh, Verizon, it's a telephone expense. So this is another one that would probably copy forward. Well, we didn't do it last time. That's why it's not basically suggesting it for us this time. But if we were to go next month, it would do the same thing. We'll go through the same process. It would suggest it is what I mean. And I'm going to copy the Ver Verizon. I'm going to make a new vendor for it by putting it into the old vendor section here. I'm going to have this be an, an electronic transfer. And then I'll see if we have a telephone uh, expense or if they just kind of group it all into the uh we do we got a telephone expense so that's good that's good I, I sounded surprised i would expect that they would have it i've seen other accounting software where they grouped it all into uh utilities on their on their normal on you know on their default settings and i like to, obviously to have the telephone kind of broken out there so in any case if it wasn't there i would have made the telephone account so we have it there and i'm going to add that that of course will increase the telephone expense and it will be decreasing the checking account as we create it from this item then we have the Adam and Erica. Those are kind of like our employees. So we'll talk about them a bit separately. And then we have Chase. These are going to be loan payments. So these are going to be payments on a loan. So we'll discuss that. That's kind of a new thing. So we'll discuss how to deal with the payment on a loan. Then we have Fender. That's one of our vendors. But Fender is the vendor that we, we buy inventory from. So that's going to be a separate kind of item. We'll talk about inventory. If you don't have inventory, then it won't be an issue for you and uh, it'll be more straightforward. Then Chase, this is another loan payment. So we'll talk about loan payments in the future. Then we have the easy window repair. We had to repair a window because some kid broke it and it was very frustrating or something. So we're gonna have to put an easy window repair. That's pretty, pretty straightforward. Every time we pay for the window we repair, it's probably gonna be like repairs and maintenance or something like that. So I'm gonna pick up again. I'm just gonna copy the reference. Gonna put that into the uh, vendor here and then the other side is going to be something like repairs and maintenance which is probably there's maintenance maintenance and repair they call it maintenance and repairs i usually call i usually say repairs and maintenance but they say maintenance and repairs same thing different order so i'm going to say the drop down we'll pick up the electronic and uh there it is so that's obviously going to be decreasing the checking account other side going to the income statement increasing the expense of uh of maintenance and repairs and then we're going to create that now, if we refresh this, I don't even need to refresh the screen because it, it did it to this one too. So notice those suggestions happen real time. So if you're working like a full year's worth of bank fees, like if you didn't do the bookkeeping for like a whole year, which I know you would never do, you know, but if you, you know, pick it up someone else's books and they didn't do the book for, and you put a whole year's of bank fees, then it will help with those suggestions, right? It'll start to line up uh, the suggestions as you go through them. So here we have it. It's suggesting it's picking up the right one here. I'm not sure why I didn't pick up the uh, vendor, but I'll put it in the vendor here. And then I'm going to make this an electronic, and so we'll keep that. So that looks good. So same thing, we paid the easy window repair again, so I'm going to say create that. And then we have Adam, again, that's an employee, we'll deal with that later. And then we have a draw, and so we'll deal with that later, we'll deal with it a little bit differently than we did last time, this time putting it to an equity account. So that's going to be it. Let's see what happens to the balance sheet and the income statement or the PL. Let's go to the balance sheet first and uh, recalculate that information. Then I'm going to go up top and I'm going to go to the uh, checking account and let's see our activity within it. Here is our activity. Note it kind of shortens it down and so you can go to page by page, which is kind of nice, but I like to see it all. On. I like to just scroll on down to the whole thing. So I'm going to pick 50. Show, show me everything I can see on one page, please. And then we're going to go down to here. Here's our new activity, Verizon, uh, Edison, uh, the easy window repairs, and so on and so forth. Note the form type for all of them is, is of course, that other payment. So that's where it would go. I mean, if you when you open it up, it's going to go to other payments, not going to go to like the bank feed uh, format. So when we enter the bank feeds, it's still generating a form through like a quick data input format. All right. So then if we go to the PNL, let's take a look at the profit and loss. Let's bring this up just to the current month we're working in. So I'm going to change uh, the beginning date here. So I'm going to go on down to the drop down. I'm going to make this a custom date range this time. And I'm going to change this on up to, uh, we want April, April. And then I'm just going to go all the way out to the end of the year. There's nothing in there after, after April. So this will just be April stuff. So now in April, this is all we have. We've got the maintenance. We got utilities expense, the telephone and the bank fees and interest all pretty simply entered in there from the bank fees. You can see the second month possibly being a little bit easier to pull some of that information forward than the first month. We're going to stop here. Uh, so that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.